Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at horizontal projections so we can answer questions from exercise 6a. Basically what we're going to be doing here is two-dimensional SUVAT. So in this case here we have a ball at the top of a uh, 30 meter tall building and it has an initial speed to the right hand direction of 20 meters per second. If we think about the vertical direction here it has no speed in that direction so we say that the initial speed vertically is 0, the initial speed horizontally is 20. The ball is going to travel like this, it's going to be pushed off the side of the building and it's going to uh, have a projection of this kind of shape here. And don't forget that when it's going to be pushed off this uh, building here, it's going to be accelerating down to the ground with an acceleration of g, the acceleration due to gravity. So what we're going to do first is we're going to have a look at doing SUVAT in the vertical direction to see how long it takes the ball to reach the ground. So s, the distance travelled, will be 30. The initial speed vertically is 0. Yes, the initial speed horizontally is 20, but we're not interested in horizontal directions. We're interested in the vertical direction, and it has an initial direction vertically of 0. V, we're not interested in, and A, we are interested in that. It's going to have an acceleration down towards the ground of 9.8, and we don't know what the time is. So what we're going to do then is we're going to come up with a formula, a SUVAT formula that links S, U, A, and T together. That's this one here. Substituting in the values, so we're going to get 30 as the distance travelled for S, equals U, the initial speed is 0, times T that we need to find, plus half times A, A is 9.8, uh, the acceleration due to gravity, and T squared. So we can simplify this formula here to 30 equals 4.9 T squared, divide by the 4.9, do your square rooting, and you get you will get plus minus 2.5, but we're only going to take the 2.5 positive value here because it doesn't make sense to have it as a negative. So once we've done that, we can now answer the question of find the horizontal distance travelled in that time. And now what we're effectively going to do is some horizontal SUVAT. You could do it through the SUVAT formula, or you could use the um, distance equals velocity times time formula because we have no acceleration in this direction. So doing SUVAT horizontally you can do it as horizontal distance equals horizontal speed times time. The reason you can use this formula here is because there is no acceleration left or right. Effectively it's just going to travel horizontally at 20 meters per second until it hits the ground. So in this case horizontal distance equals 20 the initial speed times the time that it's traveling horizontal for that's 2.5 so the time that it takes to hit the ground is going to be the same time as it takes to travel horizontally as well so in that case there we're going to get 50 meters that was if you use the exact value of 2.5 from your previous answer there it was 2.4 something 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 uh, and in actual in actual fact you'll get 49 to two significant figures if you were to use the proper value of this time here from the previous question. Alright then, you could have done this by a SUVAT formula, let me just quickly show you how you would have done that. You would have used S equals the unknown value, U equals 20, it's still going to have an initial uh, final speed of 20 because that's not going to change, A is 0, it's not going to have any acceleration, and T we know is 2.5. Now some formulas here will work better than others. The formula that I tend to use here is U plus V divided by 2 times T um, and therefore you're going to get 20 plus 20 is 40, divide that by 2 is 20 and then that's just where this 20 comes in here is the average of the velocities um, so that, and that is just 20, it's going to stay at 20 forever and you'll use the exact value of 2.5 as I've just said. Moving on to the next question then, a particle is projected horizontally with a velocity of 15 meters per second, find the horizontal and vertical components of the displacement uh, of the particle from the point of projection after three seconds. So effectively what we're going to do is we're going to have it at a infinitely high tower and push it off with 15 meters per second squared. And we want to work out how far horizontally it will travel and how far vertically it will travel in three seconds. 
So effectively what we're going to do then is we're going to do some uh, SUVAT equations. Uh, I'm going to call the vertical change in uh, distance y and the horizontal change in distance x. So what we're going to effectively refer to this to is the initial speed in the x direction is 15 and the initial speed in the y direction, well it's just being projected horizontally so it has no initial speed in the y direction. So you can refer to it like this uh, if you want to. But horizontally first we're going to use the formula of distance equals speed times time. We've slightly changed the notation here from S being um, distance travelled or displacement, back to D, this is effectively distance equals speed times time, because the speed is going to remain constant. You can use this formula here when the, dis when the, when the speed remains constant throughout your journey. In this case here, the horizontal speed is not going to be changing, so we can use distance equals speed times time, x equals 15 times 3, that's 45. So the distance that it's travelled horizontally is 45. Now the distance that it's going to travel vertically is slightly more difficult to calculate because we've got acceleration downwards as the value for g. So we have to use a full SUVAT equation here. s, the distance travelled, is y effectively. We could just leave it as s if you want to. There is no initial speed vertically, so that's 0. v, we're not interested in. Acceleration downwards is 9.8 and we have a time of 3. So substituting into this formula here and we can substitute all the values in and we get y is 44.1. So there we are. So the horizontal component um, projection is going to be 45 meters and the vertical projection downwards is 44.1 meters. Part B to this question then is find the distance of the particle from its starting point after three seconds, well we know the horizontal component is 45, the vertical component is 44.1, so we can just do a little bit of Pythagoras distance working out here. So distance is equal to the square root of 45 squared plus 44.1 squared equals 63 metres to two significant figures. So, final question then. Uh, a particle is projected horizontally with a speed of u meters per second from a point 122.5 meters above the horizontal plane. The particle hits the plane at a point which is at a horizontal distance of 90 meters away from the starting point. So, let's draw a diagram first. We have this uh, situation happening here. It's 122.5 meters above the ground and it lands 90 meters away from the starting point. And we need to work out this u value here. Now what we're probably going to be looking for is uh, simultaneous equations from the vertical component and the horizontal component. We might, we'll probably need to work out the time that it hits the floor using the vertical component and then work out the distance u um, using that value of t as well to work out the value for u. So first things first, we're going to um, look at the horizontal component here and this equation here is giving us the horizontal component distance equals speed times time and here we have a distance 40 in the horizontal equals the initial speed of u times by time Well, we don't know either of those two values all we know is that it's traveled 90 meters in the, ver in the horizontal component so we are going to have to look at the vertical component here to work out that time so, doing SUVAT in the vertical components now, we want to travel 112.5 metres downwards. Initial speed in the vertical component is 0. Final speed we don't need to know. Acceleration downwards is 9.8 and we don't know what the time is. So using that s equals ut plus half at squared formula again, and we can work out the value of t by substituting in the values, and we get t is equal to 5. Now we can go back to that distance equals speed times time formula and we know the distance horizontally is 90, we know the time that it takes to get there is 5, so it must therefore be that u is equal to 18 metres per second. Okay, so there we are, we had to work with both the vertical and the horizontal component there. So in all of these situations here, you can always get two equations by working out either SUVAT vertically or SUVAT horizontally. And remember, when you're working horizontally, you can use distance 
equals speed times by time uh, as well because your speed remains constant throughout your horizontal um, throughout your horizontal journey. So you can only use this when you're working horizontally. Okay, your turn to have a go at this question here then. Pause the video and try this question out. All right then, so a particle is projected uh, with an initial velocity of 20 meters per second. So let's start this diagram going uh, from the start. So along a flat, smooth tabletop uh, from a point that is two meters from the edge. Okay, so two meters from the edge. Uh, work out the total time taken for the particle to travel from the point of projection until it lands on the floor. So the height of the table is 1.2 and we need to work out so it's the particle is going to travel through here and then it's going to land around here. Okay, brilliant. So in this question here then we'll work out the time that it has to travel this whole distance from here to here. Now first of all what I'll probably do is split up this uh, journey into two components. The top component here and then the projection component. So let's work out the time it takes to travel this two meters um, initially. So uh, now horizontally we can use the distance equals speed times time formula. It's going to travel a distance of two meters and its speed is 20 meters per second. So it's 20 t. So we're going to then divide one by the other. So we're going to get one tenth t. So t is one tenth of a second. So we've done the first bit. Let's now have a look at the second bit. So we need to know then um, the time that it's going to take to travel and hit the ground. So what we're interested then is the vertical component here where we know that the distance downwards is 1.2, initial speed vertically is zero, and velocity, we don't need to know that really, acceleration downwards as well is 9.8, and uh, t is what we want to find. So in this case here, we're gonna substitute it into s equals ut plus half a t squared, 1.2 equals zero times t plus a half of 9.8, times by t squared and then divide by uh, 4.9 so do 1.2 divided by 4.9 because that's half of 9.8 and then square root your answer and you get a final answer here of t equals 0 0.495 basically and then so total time will be then the addition of these two times added together so total time is going to be equal 0.595. To round this to two significant figures, it's going to be 0 0.60 seconds. And there we are. So that's the answer to this question here then. Uh, have a go at plenty of the examples from exercise 5a. We're going to make it a lot more difficult uh, in the next couple of exercises. We're going to be projecting it upwards now. So make sure you get familiar with this sort of stuff before we move on to the harder stuff. The problem solving and exam type questions are quite useful for this. Okay, thanks very much for watching.